Hello everybody, welcome back to Buzzard Drewst. I am Buzzard. And I don't know what I want to call this. They uh, keep on my normal Wednesday, what I called Weed Wednesday. YouTube didn't like it. So, got to come up with a new name. I was thinking something like Wheezy Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know. Put it down in the comments down below what you think this would uh with the items I'm covering here, uh, what category you think it might fall in, and I'll try to come up with a catchy name if, if no one in the comments does. Anyway, on my previous video on Let's Do It Together, I had several items. I had two kinds of spices, powdered sugar, oil, pancake mix. I told you three of these items would be used today. The first item. Meat tenderizer. Now, you got to remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying this is a cure all or whatever. You need to consult your physician, your doctor, do your own research on it. This is something I would do or use. So, meat tenderizer. Meat tenderizer contains, uh, now I'm going to get this word wrong, papain. Uh, enzyme that breaks down proteins. It breaks down toxins from bug bites such as mosquitoes, bee stings, and non-poisonous spider bites. It also eases backache and reduces pain and itching. To make what they're talking about here, you take uh, mix sufficient water with tenderizer to make a paste. Apply to stings and bites and place a bandage to hold it in place. For backache, rub it, make it the same way, and rub it where it hurts. Uh, it just helps ease back pain and stuff. So that'll be meat tenderizer. Now another thing, the reason I know about meat tenderizer is back before I was even a teenager, we went to the ocean, and my cousin and I, got to playing with a uh, man of war jellyfish and he thought poking it with the straw was a good idea and I was just too close and ended up getting stung well the lifeguard that they had in that area told us to get some meat tenderizer and make a paste and put meat tenderizer on it and it would break the toxins down make it quit burning and itching and stuff. So that was why I know about meat tenderizer. Now what I currently use I, on like a bee sting when one of my kids or grand grandbabies or grandkids get stung is I take about a quarter to half an inch off a cigarette get it wet, put it in my mouth, get it wet like you would chewing tobacco or dip and get it good and wet, put it over the sting, put a band-aid on it to hold it there. I don't know what it is that's in the tobacco that breaks down the toxins. It may be the same stuff. I've never done research on it. My grandpa, when I was real little, uh, that's what he done. If we got a bee sting or something like that, uh, he smoked camels without filters. He'd crush out a cigarette, tear a piece off, throw it in his mouth, get it good and wet, put it on there, and put a piece of tape on it. So that's what I currently use. But for someone who may not be around smokers or dippers, meat tenderizer would be what I feel, if I didn't have the tobacco around, is what I would actually use. Now, the next item is something that I've never heard of before. I got this magazine. Full disclosure, it's, uh, it's called Prepping Survival Guide. And this was to be on display until January 14th of 2019. So I'm, I'm assuming it probably came out in December of 2018. Now I save all my old magazines, 
I've probably been through this a hundred times. Just in case I missed something or I read over something and it didn't sink in the first time. And I want to read you what they put in here. This is what they wrote. Um, I don't know if this was the actual Arthur, author, but Jason Hunt, owner of Camp Craft Outdoors, Survival School, and manufacturer of handcrafted wax canvas bags in Kentucky. Um, but it, it, it's on a... I know he wrote this article, and this is kind of a side deal on there. There's uh, these and other magazines like it have it on there. But it uses powdered sugar and oil. And I am going to make some of it here today since I'm going to do a video on it. And let me read through it here. It says, over 4,000 years ago on the battlefields of ancient Egypt, a mix of honey and animal fat was used to treat wounded in amazing, with amazing results. With the advent of modern sugar technology, sugar replaced honey due to its wider availability and ease of transport. And the modern, modern availability of oils for cooking, honey and fat have largely been left to the primitive past. Now with that part of that said, if it ever got bad enough, you may not be able to get powdered sugar and cooking oil. So it's good to know that you can use honey and ant rendered animal fat. Anyway, to go on. Uh, the combination of sugar and oil has been proven effective time and time again at healing battlefield wounds, ulcers, parentheses bed sores, gunshot wounds and burns. Sugar was later added to povidine, iodine, and marketed as sugardine. During both world, world wars, the addition of providine iodine was found to be unnecessary and physicians again started testing the power of sugar. They found that powder or confectioners sugar and standard cooking oil provided the best and most costive, cost effective treatment to make. You take three parts of confection or powdered sugar with one part of oil, mix until uniformly smooth, store in any airtight jar. The material will last indefinitely and will be shelf stable. So that is really good. I mean, it'll last, like I said, indefinitely, and it's shelf-stable. That's something that would be great to start doing now and adding to your long-term preps. Because, you know, you're going to get cuts and stuff like that, or, God forbid, you have a gunshot wound. It says, caution. All bleeding must be completely controlled before sugar dyeing can be used on a fresh wound because sugars bind with calcium, aiding sugar dyeing before bleeding has stopped will prevent formation of blood clots, thus worsening bleeding. It is best practice to wait 24 to 48 hours depending on the wound severity before sugar dyeing is applied. Apply copious amounts, a quarter inch to a half inch thick layer of sugar dyeing to cover or fill the wound, then wrap with dry gauze. Pack deeper wounds full with sugar dyeing, change dressing daily, and continue to change until the wound has fully sealed, healed. When treating a burn in this way, Pain usually stops quickly, and the burn will literally self-debride. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but that's, I, that's what it says. <laughs> Cover the burn with sugar dyeing, again using a quarter to half inch, and cover it all with a gauze dressing. Change the dressing daily. Like I said, this is not mine. 
ideal. Um, I vaguely remember when we studied the Civil War, them talking about using that since antibiotics were pretty much non-existing. But anyway, do your research. So what I'm going to do is make some up. Now I've got a, two, a gallon freezer bag because I figured it would be easier to mix and not get powder everywhere. Or try not to get it everywhere. So I'm going to just use three cups of powdered sugar. And the reason I'm going ahead and making this big of a batch, like it said, it lasts indefinitely and is shelf stable. So this is something I can put out uh, with my medical supplies that I've got and not have to worry about it. Now what I've done is got me a quart jar which holds four cups. So this should all fit in here. And I wrote on here, sugar dine after bleeding has stopped, place a quarter to half inch on wound and cover. Deep wounds, pack and cover. Burns, quarter to half inch, cover. Uh, change bandages daily. Now, not only will it be on this jar, it will also be in my book with my uh, medical herbs and stuff like that. I don't know how many of you noticed, but the some of my suggestions that might help on this latest Kung Fu flu, uh, the video's been taken down. So, do your, do your research. Look into natural healing. Uh, find you an herbalist that is close to where you're at. Uh, get you some books on medical, medical plants. Now, hopefully this don't make a big mess. Should be all right as long as I don't break the bag. And one thing about it being in this Ziploc bag, you can kind of look and you can see places where the powdered sugar hasn't blended in real well. Where if you was mixing this in a bowl, if you didn't get it mixed up real good, uh, you might find out that not all of it was mixed together. put four cups of stuff in here, you know, three of the sugar and one of the oil, but I don't know if it's even going to fill up the quart jar. It doesn't look like it. Try to get as much of this down. And what I want to do is just cut the corner off of it and put it in the jar. Now, if this doesn't fill up the jar, I will probably make another make enough to finish filling the jar but and I forgot to get my scissors Anyway, it looks like I got it mixed up pretty good. 
I'm going to do is just cut the corner out of this. And squeeze it in the jar. Now, if I do make if this is not enough to fill this jar, I'll know next time not to cut the corner off. Just take out what I can or double my batch or whatever I need to do to... And I'm sure you could use coconut oil, which would probably be good too. It would probably be better than the uh, regular cooking oil. And like I said, since it's shelf stable, well now I know Didn't even fill it up halfway. Come close to filling it up halfway. So I guess I shouldn't have cut the corner off. But anyway, I was just wanting to show you. It's real simple. Take just a few minutes to do. Last indefinitely. Shelf stable. Remember. Don't be a dead fish. Oh boy. I messed that one up, didn't I? <laughs> Only dead fish follow the flow of the stream. Don't be a dead fish. This is Buzzard. See ya.